something that people ask me about a lot is, okay, I know about my type and I'm learning about my type, but my partner is a different type and, or I want to know how to, to navigate that, which I think is, is brilliant. And that's why I also said, I know that most of the people listening are women because they're the <laughs> ones that are like, how do I do this? Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, a human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Welcome to the Human Design Hive Podcast. Let's get into it. Hello. Hey there, Haley. How you doing? Hello. Good as always. That's good. You can have a little more enthusiasm in your voice because I can see you smiling, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I find that I am not a, a verbally enthusiastic person. <laughs> well, yeah. you are, but then you get too enthusiastic and the words don't <laughs> it just it come out these weird gibberish. disjointed chunks. It doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to go back and forth. Yeah. But I always enjoy it because you're so <laughs> laughing so much <laughs> when you try to tell a story. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. So yeah. it is it is good to see your smiling face. And um I'm excited I'll get to see you again soon in a couple weeks. Yeah. You're gonna come back and visit for a little bit, which will be fun. So we better get to work on recording some episodes that when you're here, we I don't know. have to do that. <laughs> I, I know. know <laughs> and I can't pack it in my suitcase. No. Well, you'll have your computer. Oh, you won't have your microphone. That's okay. That's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think by now, everybody out there, they're like, ah, they're they're just pretty normal people. They're not doing the, <laughs> the, the Joe Rogan setup here of having everything. Gosh. I say that without, you know, really knowing because I just know it's the biggest podcast out there, but I just do not listen to Joe Rogan because, uh, <laughs> lots of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I find in general, I don't listen to a lot of men. I mean, okay. Hmm. So as far as podcasts go, the only like male informed podcast I listen to is smart list because I just love them and they're not trying to <laughs> teach me anything. They're just funny and adorable and I love hearing their stories. But I have found over time that I just don't tend to gravitate towards male teachers or anything like that anymore. It's like my jam is learning from other women and trying to help other women. Mm -hmm. Probably crazy, but that's just how I feel. <laughs> So I if you're like a guy out a there lot listening, of people. no offense, no offense, <laughs> I love you too, but I know that most of the audience is women. Yeah. And I think a lot of times I feel like a lot of women, they, they agree with you on that. Yeah. I mean, I used to have, like I said, I was talking to somebody the other day and it was the very first, uh, well, it was one of the first, what would have, what would now be a podcast was back in the day, a radio show on, <laughs> um, I don't know if it was on Sir no, it was maybe on a Pandora even. Uh, this was probably like early 2000s, oh. maybe. Uh, Deepak Chopra had um, oh. a show and people could uh -huh. actually like either call in or, or write in. I don't know. But I, he was one of the first uh, like meditation, spiritual teachers that I, I learned from because there wasn't a whole, there wasn't this massive amount out there as there is today. And that mm -hmm. always sounds like the whole, like, oh, we had to go find our, you know, information in the cave, or we had to walk <laughs> the 10 miles in the snow <laughs> when you say stuff Uphill like that. Uphill both ways, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I think everybody can agree. I mean, the iPhone didn't come out until 2007, I believe. Yeah, I think so. You know, so yeah, there was. It's just wild. It's yeah. Wild when you think about it how fast things change right yeah because i yeah. remember like i always say i thought i was cool when i had a blackberry <laughs> i thought i was the shit because i went to first time i ever went to to new york city was 
you know, around the early 2000s, somewhere around there. It was after, yeah, after 9-11, it was after us, because I never left the towers. They were, they were gone by the time I got there. Uh-huh. So around 2005 or something like that. And I remember seeing everybody on the street carry, you know, I had a flip phone at that point. You know, everybody had a flip phone. <laughs> I had a cool mm-hmm. flip phone. I think it was red. <laughs> Might have been blue. But anyways, everybody was carrying around these Blackberries. And I was like, <laughs> here I am in New York City and like, exciting. And I just loved all the energy of everything. And these really important people with their heads down. just pun- I was like, what is that? I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what did I need it for? I just needed it. That's my that's my Gemini rising and my astrological uh, <laughs> Uh, profile there but anyway so yeah I am oh gosh and then I you know I see people that well they're getting phased out slowly these flip phones but if, you know I saw lady the other day with their flip phone trying to text and I'm like do mm-hmm. you still have to punch those numbers three times I, in order to get a C <laughs> oh my god I I was trying to put our wi-fi password <laughs> into our printer the other day <laughs> Oh and yeah, it's the same thing. And I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. texting used to suck." Cause, yeah. And I, it, it wasn't picking up the Wi-Fi name, so I had to type in the Wi-Fi name and then the password, and then it didn't work. No, it didn't work. That's said, notorious. Fuck this. That's notorious for printers. They do that to you all the time. I think they all talk to each other, <laughs> and they're like, "This, this printer funny. has never given me issue before. It's been a good printer." And it said, "Fuck you. You've moved me too many times." <laughs> This friend, I cannot. I want a real home. I want a permanent home. I just make friends with the network you hooked me up with. And then you move me. I don't know anybody. Jesus. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I know what you mean because my printer's the same way. You have to like um yeah, press the six, you know, three times. You know, oh my oh god. My god. Like I can't even handle if I have thing. to. I know I can't even handle if I have to use like um like you guys have the um so the Roku, and you have to mm. do the remote. No, no thing. Chromecast or Chrome TV. That's sorry, right. Chromecast, and you have to actually use the remote to go across the keyboard. You know, I have the Apple TV, so I can just talk to it, which I feel much better about because oh my god, it make me crazy trying to use ours, the remote to punch all those keys you can also type tech talk too but i don't know I, I don't like talking into a remote <laughs> i feel weird <laughs> i also don't like talking into my watch to respond to a text i don't like the verbalization of it that's my issue it's not like this so if what it's going into weird I just... <laughs> talking into the remote like you feel weird like someone is looking at you talking to the remote <laughs> yeah and they're like, what is she doing? <laughs> yes. It's kind of like singing into your hairbrushes. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's all right. <laughs> and I got corks. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to reel it back in from here. Well, I got it. I got it. I Even don't... though I'm weird and I'm different and I'm uh-huh. not your type. You still care for me. I do care for you. And uh, of course I do. <laughs> Come on. I know. You're segueing. Segue. You're segueing. You're right. Because <laughs> we we are going to be doing a little series here, uh, type-centric, about the different types. And it's, I, I told you earlier, originally the <laughs> the title kept popping into my head of the care and feeding of like a manifesto or care and feeding of a generator but you know i mean i guess you can feed them too but really i wanted to talk (laughs) about the really the needs of each type especially in relationship but not so much even just romantic relationship there's going to be definitely a component to that but it is something that people ask me about a lot is okay i know about my type and i'm learning about my type but my partner is, you know, a different type and, or I want to know how to, to navigate that, which I think is, is brilliant. And that's why I also said, I know that most of the people listening are women because they're the (laughs) ones that are like, 
how do I do this? You know, they're looking at how to improve their relationships in their life and everything else. So I thought it would, um, we'll do this, you know, in separate episodes. So that might be easier to digest. And, but really just want to talk about what the different, you know, challenges in general are for each type, and then how you can help support the the person in your life that may be of that type. But it's also a way for you to, when we talk about supporting that type, if you are that type, you can think, okay, this is also what I'm going to need in a relationship. So this is mm-hmm. something that I can make sure that I can communicate to my, my, my friend, my partner, my whatever, as to what is going to help me feel supported as well. If that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so I thought, I always wonder who to start with first. What do you think? Start with a manifester. Okay. It's right. For we me. always, we always leave them. They always seem to be kind of mm. not so talked about in here. Well, that is true. They are the the sm- a smaller portion, not the smallest. The reflectors are the smallest portion of the population, but they are. But they're incredibly vital because, as we know, they give the the manifester or in quantum human design called the initiator. They give us things to respond to. So, uh-huh. to recap, the stereotype is about uh, what's it nine percent of the population, I believe, and. They have the internal nonverbal creative flow, meaning they're tapped into source in a way that they can't even really verbalize or know. They just know that they will get that, that urge to act, to move, to create, to start something. And they just can Uh get into action because of their energetic um, uh, makeup really, because they're going to have one of the four motors of the, um, body graph connected to the throat. So that's what helps make them Mm -hmm. a manifester. Whoops. Nope. I take that back. You should correct me on that. They're not going to have one of the four. They're going to have one of three (laughs) because if they have the sacral center, they have the sacral that makes them a manifesting generator. Yes. So my bad. They'll have one of the other three motors attached to or connected, not attached, connected to the throat. Some configuration. (laughs) Okay. So because they have this internal nonverbal creative flow, this urge to create, to do their strategy is what? Oh, to inform. Correct. Their strategy is to inform. Who are they to inform? Uh, People around them. Yeah. People who may be impacted by what they're doing. Correct. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Let them know what they're thinking of doing, what they want to do, or if they, you know, don't want to be disturbed, all of the things, because that way it helps re- uh, reduce resistance to actions that the, the manifester wants to take because they, once they get in that flow, like I said, they uh, don't want to be interrupted necessarily or questioned or, you know, have to ask permission, any of that stuff. And so the not self theme for the manifester is anger because that's usually the indicator that they have not informed. And so they've been interrupted in some way, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because they've got a lot of creative energy. They've got a lot of, you know, they they tend to put off this energetic um, what's the, well, their aura they say for, for a manifester, I hate the words they use, but mm-hmm. is it's, it's a repelling aura. But mm-hmm. what I see it as is that, you know, the manifester is moving forward ahead, you know, it's pushing things. It's, it's like, it doesn't need other people to get into action because it's a manifester, right? It's, they mm-hmm. are a manifester. <laughs> they have the ability to get into action on their own. So, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of us types, the rest of the other types need generally other people to give them something to respond to or to be invited into. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, to have this one type that doesn't really need other people to get into action, it can sometimes feel their aura because it's a little bit closer to them. And I I like to think their energy is like, you know, how the bow of a ship is moving through the water. 
you're one of those mm-hmm. icebreakers or something. Like it's just, mm-hmm. you know, get out of my way. I'm coming through, get out right. of my way. It's not personal. <laughs> it's just they are kind of self-contained yeah. in that regard. But that does not it's mean. not that it's like it's not that it's repelling. It's just a little bit tougher. Yeah. And it's not that they don't quote unquote need people in the sense of connections with people love you know friendship Mm -hmm. everybody needs that there's it's not that yes it's just that getting into action creative piece they have that direct tap into source that gives them the impulse Mm -hmm. that they can then start the ball rolling and then ideally they kind of hand it off to somebody else they give somebody else something to respond to invite others to take Mm -hmm. part of so some of the challenges then for the manifester, as we said, they, they need to inform those around them. That's part of their strategy. That mm-hmm. is their strategy in order to reduce that resistance to what they're doing. Uh, the other thing to point out, which we kind of sort of touched on there, was that they mm-hmm. do not have the sacral center defined. Yes. So having an undefined sacral center, what does that mean about their energy levels in that regard so that means that it's going to be some kind of variable variability to their Mm -hmm. energy level right and that it is uh not sustainable right they can Mm -hmm. dip in they can borrow because they're gonna amplify that energy but yeah it's going to depend largely on who they are around So some of the things that they struggle with is that sustainable energy because they do have this energy to get into action and, you know, they are going to have another motor that's driving them in the chart, maybe more than one. So they may feel Mm -hmm. like they can keep going, but they're here as non-sacral type to learn when enough is enough to know when they've, it's time to rest now retreat a little bit, restore. So they're not designed to work in the all day long nine to five capacity. Um, Mm -hmm. So they do run the risk of burning out, especially if they've gone at this pace their whole life and they don't know these things about Mm -hmm. themselves and they feel like Mm -hmm. they just should be able to keep going. You know, they will, or they want to keep going Mm -hmm. because they have this ideas of things they want to do or whatever. A lot of manifestors may struggle with like i said because of that of keeping pace uh with others because of the fact that most of the planets generators and i think one key thing that they can well they probably projectors too reflectors as well they struggle with feeling different than those around them because I think especially women who are manifestors and don't know this about themselves early in life have probably dulled down their westerness a lot because it's a powerful energy. You know, it as a, as a woman to, I think woman, girl to move, to have this inner urge to like, just do things on your own time when you want to do it. And then, cause women were like conditioned to, always, you know, ask for someone else's help or helping someone else. Like, I don't know. I think there's more in women that were like told to be nice and told to ask permission. You know, we're very raised. Well, you weren't so much, but younger generations to be a little more acquiescent. It was a lot of like, like meek and feebleness. I feel like it was like, it's kind of what women were Mm -hmm. seen as and kind of conditioned it to be. Yeah anyhow it's just because they get afraid of us <laughs> that's right because we're at me. super powerful and so i mean every every little girl's raised to be sweet and kind and don't be too much trouble don't be too much and a lot of manifestors probably have felt their whole life that they're a little bit too much because they do have this like energy that people react to in a strange way but that's only because they're not using it, I want to say not using it properly, but learning how to manage it properly, like the informing piece really goes a long way Mm -hmm. for the manifester. Um, It's because, you know, they're not here to be told what to do. (laughs) And 
that's, if you sit with that for a little bit, it's interesting because I don't know that all of any of us are told what to do, but sisters in particular have their own unique way of being in this world. Like I said, that could feel at times a little lonely, a little lonely. Did I say lonely? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little lonely. Don't give you a loan. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> And one interesting thing about uh, manifestors in relationships is that a lot of times to enter into it correctly using your strategy, they may have to initiate relationships, which is also a no, no for women for a while. It's not so bad now, but you know, if you're of a certain age, you know, probably over the age of 40, maybe 45 and you're a uh, manifestor woman, that may have been something that struggled with because it was really seen as very forward and not at all appropriate for a woman if a woman's like out there pursuing anyone you know it's like oh she's what is she up to i mean just look at what your dad says about me i'm not a manifester but he likes to joke and say that i stalked him because oh yeah i'm actually the one (laughs) maybe that's why he's a manifesting generator but i was the one that was like finally like i'm gonna talk to this guy that wasn't that just makes him feel better (laughs) <laughs> but in a way i bristle at that when he describes it that way because i'm like don't say it like that you know you make me sound like some kind of psycho but so maybe you know there's some some uh conditioning to work out around that so with these challenges in mind what is the best way to help support a manifester because manifestors really are here to understand their power, claim that power, Mm -hmm. and kind of overcome this feeling of being alone and isolated. Because um, even though they don't need people to do certain things, like I said, we all need people in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it may have been a challenge for them to build healthy relationships in that way. So the first thing a manifester um for themselves has to do is make peace with that and understand that they are powerful really get comfortable with expressing their own power and experimenting with that whole strategy thing and whatever your authority is as well you know i think i also think i also think we might do a series on each type and the different types of authority that type could have and what that would look like that's another idea i just threw out there be good. okay so <laughs> We're workshopping ideas as we move along. <laughs> so therefore, manifestors in relationships of any sort, relationships is we're probably going to bend towards this whole romantic relationship, but these are things that we can all learn from. Okay. I mean, pretty much everything is some form of a relationship. So yeah. So if you know a manifester, if you love a manifester, if you care for a manifester, whatever the context, fit it into your relationship and use these wisely. (laughs) So first and foremost, you got to honor their power. Like I said, these are, these are powerful people. They're no more powerful than any of the rest of us. Not to say that there's this dominating type. It's not that it's just that Mm -hmm they play an important role all of us do but they have that tapped in to source um thing going on that really helps get things moving on the planet you know helps us you know mm-hmm. get things done by giving us something to to do so to respond to right so when it comes to that strategy goes both ways they say so one thing you can do for the manifester is inform them work with their strategy as well they you i mean it's just the whole treat people how you want to be treated kind of thing if you know Mm -hmm. that you would like for this person to inform you when they're about to do things it also works well for you to inform the manifester of your intentions expectations that may be because then like Mm -hmm in um regards to like if the manifester is in this 
they may not be in their flow yet, but if they, they do like to get a heads up of what's coming, you know, so that they mm -hmm. can prepare for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's one thing you can do to help support the manifester in your life is to honor their strategy, type in strategy by informing them when you have expectations or needs even from the manifester, give them a heads up. And one thing important to note about strategy that I didn't say before about the manifester, but we, I, I, I don't think I can say this enough about the informing for mm -hmm. a manifester to hear is that it's not asking for permission. <laughs> it's not, you know, saying that you have to ask this person if you can do something you don't, you're going to do it anyhow. And if you just let them know ahead of time, mm -hmm. chances are there'll be less friction there for you. Okay, yeah. but remember, it's not. It's not saying. It's not saying. Can I do this? It's saying I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. So which which is a big right? So unless you know you're incredibly young listening to this, and your parents knew about human design, chances are most people didn't. And if you are a manifester listening to this, then you know your growing up years probably were a lot of pushback with that because you as a small child may have gotten the urge to do something, not understanding that that's I don't want to say mom, that not everybody has that same flow and you probably got restricted a lot by your parents or even mm -hmm. yelled at by your parents or other people in your life because you just acted not understanding mm -hmm. and which is fair. So likewise, if you're the parent of a manifester, you need to, to, really learn how to inform your child that they need to inform you without posing all these restrictions on them and mm -hmm. doing that. Cause you do have to keep them safe, you know, and your parents yeah. were trying to keep you safe as a manifester, not knowing maybe you were a manifester, but mm -hmm. I mean, I know as a parent, I don't have a manifester child or a manifesting generated <laughs> child, but I do have a child that wandered off in a store one day. And when he was three, and scared okay. the Jesus. <laughs> I was like, is that me or Ian? <laughs> no, that was Ian. I think you hid for your dad in the fabric store one day. <laughs> he said he lost you in a fabric store. Mind you, your dad was in a fabric store, not me. But I don't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it can be scary. Yeah. When you're, if your kid has a tendency to, to go and do things and you don't know what they're doing. I get that. But as adults, we can manage that. <laughs> And so I, I, what I was going to say, it just also reminded me of daddy left him on the beach. One day. Okay. We don't, we don't want to bring up, you know, possible abuse here. No, it wasn't abuse. Neglect. That's not the word. Neglect. No, that was oversight. <laughs> Everything was fine. He's in the other room. He's healthy. He's 23, almost 24 years old. It's all good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, Ian didn't even know what was going on. So. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a manifester and you do uh, have a manifester in your life, you know, you could also consider that as an adult, maybe this person was shut down a lot. Maybe this is what they're used to. And so they might feel somewhat aloof to you or secretive to you or something because their behavior might have been learned behavior to kind of hide what they're doing because they would get shut down a lot, you know, so you may feel that they're not letting you in they're not mm -hmm. including you in things and so it leads me to another point that you know you can't take this personal we're, we're talking about energy and it's so enlightening when you can learn these things about someone to look at it from this perspective so also the not taking it personally thing they they might require more time alone especially whatever their profile is you know if they're a line two or a line one they might need a little more time alone and um mm -hmm. you've just got to honor that it doesn't mean they don't love you and they don't want you in their lives but these could be very self-possessed people that don't always give off the vibe of save me take care of me help me <laughs> you know mm -hmm. But they want you. And yeah. if they're in, Very if they are in your life, they want to be there, you know, and mm -hmm. um, if it's that kind of relationship, friend or whatever. So that's one thing to consider. 
So the, the, I was saying about the not taking it personal when we were talking about the not self behavior, that anger part, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we also touched about touched on it once before about what that anger really is. It's just that disruptive, creative, disrupted, created, <laughs> disrupted, disrupted, creative, creative flow. <laughs> and it's like this, you know, think about getting this, this, um, this energy moving through you and you can't really put words to it. You don't know what it is. You're just moving and acting based on this impulse that you have. And then someone says, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and you're just like, you're like, oh, it's that energy's oh, got to go somewhere. And so it might bounce off on you, you know, and because it's just like interrupted. So that's why forming is so important. So understanding that this quote unquote anger is not always personal anger directed at you. I think it can be just um, this frustration almost of being interrupted and mm -hmm. getting off track and maybe not knowing how to get back to it, you know, because it's like there and then it might be gone. That's one thing. Okay. So likewise, if you observe your manifester maybe in their flow, you know what that looks like, don't bother them. Give them time to just kind of come out of it, come to you. Mm -hmm. They'll be okay. You get so that means that you also have to um really give them a lot of freedom give them their freedom to work at their own um schedule pacing whatever that mm -hmm. is most importantly here when you're building relationships with people or in relationships with people is communication and this i think really gives you a way to like I said, not take it so personally and find ways to get around that. And so that being said, communication styles for a manifester, they do mm -hmm. not have the defined sacral center. So what kind of questions works better for a manifester? More open-ended. Correct. Yeah. They're not going to really, you're not going to get to the, what you are looking for with yes or no questions. They say a lot of times that, if um, asking a non-sacral being yes or no questions, you are more likely to get a conditioned response from them because they're just trying to tell you what yeah. it is that they think you want to hear and not really what it is that is their thinking or feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I agree with that statement. <laughs> just trying to like think on something that sometimes when I'm asked, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing is answering how they want an answer. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's true. I've seen it. I've seen it in you for sure. You know, and that's why sometimes I try to not do that because it's so uh, prevalent in me as a generator to like yes or no questions helps me gain clarity. But I have found since learning this that, yeah, I get a much better like it. It feels really hard at first to do because it doesn't feel natural to me because if people ask me open-ended questions, it's a shit show sometimes because I don't necessarily know what I'm thinking or feeling. Mm -hmm. And I will give a more elusive or just kind of, I don't know, response to things. So with the manifester, asking them instead, like, I'm wondering how you feel about this, or I'm wondering if it's possible we could, you know... Uh, you could tell me what you think about this situation or, you know, just asking uh -huh. them to express what they are thinking, feeling, contemplating, whatever is going to get you a better response mm -hmm. and a better way to communicate with, uh, with a manifester. Yeah. So also as undefined uh, sacral, you need to, depending on if you are yourself a generator, a manifesting generator, you need to be wise about their definition there. They're being undefined and that knowing that they need more downtime than you do, right? Mm -hmm. And they may seem a lot more energetic than you, but they definitely need downtime. And so... A manifester, as far as rest and sleep goes, <clears throat> you know, encouraging them to maybe get into bed and kind of relax a little bit before they're like 
ready to pass out. They'll sleep better, encouraging, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And even if it's not possible, like if say you are in a marriage or a romantic relationship, whatever it is, and you are a sacral being with a manifester to maybe sometimes give them some space to sleep by themselves. And I know it's not always possible um, for people to do this, but you know, some people have different uh, schedules. Maybe somebody likes to Mm -hmm. get in bed and read for a little bit or chill out, lay down before they go to sleep. And so, I don't know, sometimes that helps to maybe not all the time, but every now and then think about giving them a little bit of space so that they, because when you're sleeping and when you're laying down for non-sacral beings, that is the chance for that uh, sacral energy to discharge out of their system. So it's necessary now and then. Yeah, there's that. And I know your projector and we'll talk about that, that later, but anyways. So, yeah, so I think those are the the main points. I can kind of synopsize them, you know, it's like really just understand that they are non-sacral, especially if you are a sacral being, understanding their their energy type, their uh, need for more cycles of rest maybe than a sacral being, that encouraging that in them, especially when you, I think if you observe over time, you'll see that I can see it in the non-sacrals that I know now that are non-sacral, I can see it before they can a lot of times when they're getting tired or it's too much. <laughs> I'm not just looking at you. There's others. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have seen it sometimes before you and I can say something to you now and you'll be like, yeah, I just need to, ugh, I just need to get away. It's like, yeah. Even your husband did that with you. You said when we were out there, he kind of called you out for maybe getting a little tired and you get a little cranky. <laughs> we'll talk about that later in the projector episode. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, communication styles, try to open more open-ended questions. Don't take their quote unquote anger personally. Don't take their need for alone time, creative time personally, especially if you have a manifester who's also, you know, uh, got a one or a, a two in their personality. They're definitely going to require more. And it goes even deeper than that of all their circuitry and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. in general, they're going to need some time alone um, because, again, doesn't mean they don't love you and they don't want you in their lives. They just don't always quote unquote, need people around them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so don't interrupt them when they're in their flow. Try not to tell them what to do. So you really got to give kind of a manifester a lot of, if you want a successful relationship, doesn't mean they get to run the relationship. You know, I know, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm giving this like permission slip for someone as a manifester to just be this like autocrat and they can do whatever they want in the relationship. That's not what mm-hmm. I'm saying. <laughs> Let's be clear. And that's not how it works. And, you know, any decent person, they don't, they don't want that either. It's like, we all say we want, we want to get our way, but I think most people just want to have happy relationships. So, Mm -hmm. you know, don't try to interrupt them. Don't try to tell them what to do. They kind of know what to do for themselves. Give them freedom and trust them. Trust them that, um, that the time that they, have to themselves is special to them. It's precious to them. It's not a snub to you. It's not a slight in any way. It's just, it's important for their energy because they do have this important role to fulfill in the grand scheme of things. So that's my Mm -hmm. caring for a manifester in in a nutshell. Any questions? No, that was good. I liked it. That's good. So we're going to leave that one there for now for today for the yeah. for the manifester we'll come back with another one with the next type once i decide what it's going to be we will discuss but anyways for all you manifestors out there remember these are things that are also important for you in a relationship mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the the sooner that you get in touch with that honor what your needs are so that you can effectively communicate to those around you what it is you need the better it is for everybody you're informing them as well right Mm -hmm. okay so we'll just leave it there for today and i know i don't do it enough to kind of do the the request here 
from you guys, the listening audience to, if you find it in your hearts to go into iTunes and leave us a nice, mm-hmm. uh, rating or review. I mean, like I said, the podcast is growing. It's awesome. I love getting the feedback from everybody, yeah. but you know, if you feel that this information is important and helpful, the more reviews and ratings we have, the the more people that we will be shown to, and they can start learning along with all of us. So yeah, if you do that, that would be great. Okay. It'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool. It'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you have a good night, Haley. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. You made it all the way to the end of today's episode, so you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening.